Hello guys, it's me. Um, I just wanted to show you how I did. Oh, this recording thing is kind of weird. When you're trying to speak to people but they're not there. You know what I mean? Anyway, I just uh, was going to make one of these. I have made uh, this in the past because I received um, these cute little my packages the website that i buy from they make they send the stuff in these cute little envelopes and i was like this needs to be make it into something like something useful i cannot throw this away like i couldn't find myself to throw this away because it was just pretty and it's like rose gold who would not want to keep it so i made this one out of that one I mean, not this one, but another one that I had. So I combine it with vinyl. And I store a lot of stuff in there, if you can see. I even added like two pockets on it. So I was gonna make another one because she also sends cute stuff in this size. And we're gonna talk about this right now before I start the tutorial. Um, but if you wanna go to straight to the tutorial, fast forward, because I've done it. You fast forward and then you go straight to the tutorial. But if you want to know what I'm talking about, then keep watching as you are. Um, on the back of the envelopes, like you can use the front, but on the back you have, sometimes you have this sticky stuff. So the way I remove them without this happening to me is I use a heat gun. I heat gun the whole thing and the sticker gets out really really easy um that would be helpful if you only have one envelope or two envelopes like in this case i only had one and i use wow and it was big so i use the front and i use the back and i didn't mind there's some writing in there which i didn't know but i'm going to erase it right now there's some writing in there because she she put some numbers on it as you can see, there's some writing. You can take that out with nail polish remover. You get nail polish remover, wipe it out. And if you have any excess glue from the sticker, Goo Gone. Goo Gone is your friend. So do that in preparations to cut it. Um, the one that I made today, which is the one that you're going to see, is cut, it's, uh, it's six by six, the squares. So, and also you're gonna see that I fail big time because I didn't pay attention where I was gonna put my bottom. So instead of putting it this way, I put it this way. So this is officially my upside down fun storage bucket. So if you wanna know how to make this, um, keep watching. Hope you like it. Okay, the first thing you need is, for your box, you need four sides, of course. Four sides for your walls, what I will, calling, I will be calling that your walls. So you make your, your little box there, and you need one for the bottom. In this case, my pieces are six by six inches. So I perfect squares of six by six. And then I'm gonna have exactly five pieces of the same size out of my, I'm using waterproof canvas and that way I don't have to worry about interfacing anything. But you can do this exact box out of uh, cotton and if you interface it with something that's really sturdy, you can get the same box, but without using the envelopes. So I have five pieces of my waterproof canvas and one extra the same size. So I got six pieces of this because I like to put a pocket. So, and right now I'm, I fold it like a little bit over half an inch, maybe six eighths, uh, no, five eighths. Five eighths and fold it again, five eighths because I wanna do like a pocket. So I'm gonna apply that first to my little box. I'm gonna prepare my lining piece first. 
and it doesn't have to be perfect because it is for your sewing studio or for you know it's it doesn't have to be completely perfect but you can measure and you can use the iron and make it perfect if you want but I think I'm good with this and then you're going to stitch that in place and then use a size 4 seam uh, size 4 stitching length right there cut the excess thread and then I think I'm going to do one more halfway it's just to give it a little bit extra I'm using gray thread because again this is for me I'm not going to change the thread that I have it's gonna look like this and then you can position it in your one of your uh, lining panels and you can baste it but you know what before I do that I think on this one I want to fold my pocket if you notice in here I have two big pockets but because this one is smaller, I think I'm going to make an extra line in there to divide into two. So I just folded it in half to mark my center. And that will keep it from shifting. So we're going to attach two panels on each side. We attach one and then we're going to attach another one and we have that. Okay, so let's do this one and we're going to use, for this one I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowances so I'm going to be sewing right on the on the edge of my fabric so we're using quarter of an inch seam allowances you can use more like do a bigger seam allowance but I think that's that's good and see this is kind of good for pencils it's gonna look good hopefully uh, it is a good way of recycling if you don't want to throw those cute fancy envelopes that your sewing supplies come in or your makeup supplies come in Anything that you receive and and you sew, you can do this. Or for anything in the house, really, it doesn't uh, matter. There we go. And then on the other two, we're gonna stitch them together, right sides together, because we basically what we're doing, we're building the bottom and the other side, just like that. So we're gonna stitch that one now. Okay, just like so. So we have this side and we have these three sides, right? So now we are going to stitch this one. And in here, I didn't leave, um, we're going to, I'm going to do that when we build the outside, but in here, because it's the lining, I didn't 
I didn't sweat it that much. I don't need it to be super perfect. But the outside, I will. Um, I'm just matching. If you see, I stitch all the way down. Um, I could have, if I wanted like a neater, um, uh, a neater box, I could have just leave a quarter of an inch clearance at the end of my stitching, not at the top, at the end. So when I, cause we're building a box, but because it's the lining, I don't mind. I just make sure I match that bottom panel. I match it nicely. So now I'm going to be stitching a quarter of an inch in to attach that um, bottom panel. So you see what I mean right now. I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch clearance. Because that will help me a bit when, I, when I'm going to finish putting everything together. Here we go. Although you can kind of skip. So basically you're gonna have like a T. You attach uh, three of your side panels and then you attach the bottom to the back. Cause now you're gonna have the bottom and you're gonna have, basically you're building a square, see? So what I did was attach my bottom piece first and you see that I leave, I left a quarter of an inch on each side because I don't want to bother this panel from here. I don't want to be stitching anything on this side. So leave that quarter of an inch on each, on each side and now we worry about putting the sides. Okay, so we're going to take this up in my back panel, we're going to attach it to the side. You can clip if you feel like you cannot control it. But if you see, over here is the same. When you're going to go here, you see that you're going to have that little, because you stitch all the way down. So what you're going to, you're not going to worry about that. You're going to pull that out, this panel out and you're going to still match your ends in there see and when you stitch these sides again you're going to stop at a quarter of an inch in and that will trust me that will make it better when you are going to do the last stitching which is the side the bottom sides i'm going to stitch this And we're going to stop at a quarter of an inch before the end. I'm do that. I don't know how this one is going to turn out, but it's going to turn out okay. Okay, you see, I attached it and I left that quarter of an inch because that's my seam allowance. If you're using half an inch seam allowances, you leave a half an inch. But what that does basically, is like it makes it easier for you when you're going to attach those sides, the fabric kind of behaves better. See, it opens better so you can kind of follow better when you're stitching that bottom that side bottom so we'll do exactly the same on the other side gonna match the side clip it if you if you need to and match that end right there and stitch Oh, 
and make sure you don't run out of bobbin thread while you're stitching. Let me change the bobbin and we'll come back. Okay, I put more bobbin thread, so we're back on. Again, we're gonna stop this shy of that stitching, quarter of an inch. Which are my seam allowances. There we go. And then we have the two panels form, the four panels, and then we have our bottoms open. Right? So because we left that quarter of an inch um, clearance, let me call it like that. Well, we can manipulate this a little bit better. And you have a straight edge right there. And that's how we're gonna be sewing it. Again, if you feel like you need to clip this, by all means, um, clip it. Let me make sure I have it. have it right there closed up now we're going to do the same thing for the other side going to open it like this on an angle come on in my threads to the back of the machine The needle is down. I'm going to be stitching. Over there. And our inside box is complete. I could have added, an, uh, added another pocket, but I didn't. Just kept only two kind of cute and then what we're gonna do what I do because I'm gonna be having this is gonna be a drop box why because this material you don't want to be bending this too much and um, if you want to really preserve and have like a neater box you should do a dropping lining as well but it goes easy it goes pretty easy just kind of folding my edges so they kind of get to the to the shape I want them to be. I'm eyeballing eyeballing the half an inch seam allowance. Again, this is something that you can also mark down. You can mark it down with a pencil when you have your flat pieces, just with a ruler. Mark your half inch seam allowances and they should be super straight. But again, because this is just for me to keep it in the sewing room, I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm not gonna be too fancy about it. Okay, so that's done and waiting for us for whenever we are, see how much, uh, how much structure the waterproof canvas has it's already standing on its own and it doesn't have the outside piece okay in here you can construct it we're gonna do exactly the same thing but kind of like to top stitch my edges and i'm gonna show you what i mean i'm gonna leave that clearance on the bottom of a quarter of an inch to make it even easier on all sides. I'm gonna do it on all my bottom sides. And let's see. The pink envelope behave really well. 
This envelope, when I made the box, behaved really, really well. And I'm pretty sure this should be the same. So we'll see how this goes. Make sure that's my top. At the top, you want to stitch all the way to the top. But on the bottom, you want to leave that clearance of the quarter of an inch or half an inch is okay so i have my quarter of an inch clearance in there what we're gonna do exactly the same that we did with everything but i am debating whether i want it and i think i do i want to do it so I'm going to top stitch my sides, at least the two front ones. Yeah, I'm going to top stitch my two front ones because in here I top stitch, if you notice, let me set this up. If you notice in here, I top stitch the sides, but in this one, I by the time I hadn't, I didn't have many of these envelopes. So I combine it with some vinyl. So you can do that as well. You can just, just do the front and then do everything else in vinyl or I'm just, I just like how it looks with the top stitch. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna have a four and a half stitch length. Making sure those things are open. I don't know, it, look, it makes it look a little bit more finished. You can do, you can fold the seams to one side and only do one side. I did two in that one, so I'm gonna do two in this one as well. But we'll see. And I think in this one, I'm going to do it only in the front. So it looks like it has a, a nice, see, and it makes your corner uh, feel more finished. I don't know. It's just the way I see it. And we're going to attach the other side. On this side. I'm going to... Turn it around because I want to start the way from the beginning. And again, leave my quarter inch clearance at the bottom. So we have these two. You see this one lays flat while this one kind of bunches up. And I think that's why I wanted to put the top stitching. So we'll do that in here as well. Make sure my seams are open. If you think you're gonna have a hard time doing this step with just a quarter of an inch seam allowances. You can always do your seam allowances, uh, set your seam allowances to be half an inch and you will have more than enough uh, space on the back to do this without fighting it. So I have my perfect front and sides. Now we're gonna deal with this one. If I wanted to be, uh, if I wanted to have my four corners top stitch, I will, in this one, I will do it differently and I will just attach 
this piece now and leave the whole bottom for the end but because i'm not going to top stitch that i'm trying to decide if i want to do that or not because it's going to be kind of funky yeah i'm going to do it that way i'm going to top stitch so that way you guys know this is this channel is not a channel that is going to be like the kind of channel that is, everything is organized i am not an organized person so um hopefully hopefully you can learn something from me hopefully i really miss my students a lot And I was thinking, well, if I just start do, doing these little videos, maybe my students can watch. And I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel bad. But you know what I'm going to do on this side, on the back pieces? Instead of doing two top stitching lines, I'm going to do one. I'm going to push my seam to one side only. And I'm going to do one side. And... That way I only go through it one time. So it should be okay. So the last one is the one that's going to give me a little bit of trouble. And not trouble, I got to be more cautious. Now that I'm going to close the pocket, the square, this one is going to be a little hard to top stitch. But don't worry. It can be done, just need to be careful. I'll show you. And this is bubble wrap paper. So, oh my goodness, you're shaking. You're shaking, I'm not shaking, I'm sorry. I have you attached to the machine, to the machine table, so that's why. So to do this top stitching, top stitching i'm gonna just i'm gonna have to kind of bend manipulate this a little bit but it's not impossible you see what i mean okay i make sure it's straight keep going down Making sure my seam is where I want it. See, it's all about moving your piece. It's not impossible. It's almost on the end. And you pull it out. done okay so now that you have your box and your top stitching now you attach the bottom the bottom piece and again you're gonna be in order if you want to take your fun I'm gonna do two sides first again I'll be matching those corners they need to match and i'm not going to be sewing all the way i'm going to leave that quarter inch clearance so it's easier and again you don't need to top stitch these i top stitch because i want it kind of like a neater edge to it but you don't need to you can just sew it just the way that I did the lining, and you should be fine too. So you can see that this is not that high. And I need that clearance. So the important thing is that you're going to do evenly. You're going to do it evenly. You already stitched that bottom piece on the side. 
you're gonna go you're gonna cross straight on the other side so you, you're gonna forget about these other two sides you're not gonna do this you're not gonna start stitching like side by side you're gonna go two sides first and then the other one trust me it's easier that way just gonna put one pin in there I'm not gonna put two so I can manipulate this like that and again leaving my half an inch clearance almost almost done okay so now you see if you leave that quarter of an inch it kind of want like it's easier to do those two last corners I kind of like to push that corner there you go and then you put a clip in the center and you have that corner easily ready. And now it doesn't matter if you leave that clearance, you can stitch all the way. It's not that. is almost done one more can push that out push this one out and you have a straight edge in there I know I may you think I'm crazy because I'm using these but I just like the look of it don't judge It's gonna be funny because I attach I, I pay attention to everything but I didn't pay attention to where I put my button and I have now my cat upside down but again it's for me this is not a material that you can unstitch so this is gonna be my upside down let's sew whatever bin because life is perfectly imperfect okay so now we are going to turn this. I actually kind of like to cut those little corners, not much, just the tip. Just the tip of the corner. Don't like to be on my, and we're gonna, see, I don't want it. If we don't do a drop in lining then we have to do this process again and I really don't like that um, because it's it's not vinyl or it's not any you know because of the material this would have looked super pretty if I would have pay attention to my little design but I didn't because I was talking to you so no one to blame here but you guys Okay, so besides the upside down design, this is perfect, okay? Now we're gonna fold again the half an inch clearance. I'm gonna do my corners first. Again, I'm eyeballing this thing just as I did the other one. So it should be fine. Half an inch. I'm gonna put 
my half an inch in here as well in the middle. Half an inch here. And here. Does it look like half an inch? I think so. Okay. And we're going to put, this is my front. Not that matters that much right now. But we're going to put that box inside. Whoop. And we're going to match the seams first. I'm going to put one in there. And one in here. I'm not going to worry about anything else but my seams right now. And some people do um, leave stitch the lining a bit more. They, they have a bigger seam allowance on the lining than on the outside. This they do it for bags because it's true. It helps you um, in lace knitter. But for some reason in this project, I saw all the stuff the same and it works. But that doesn't mean you cannot do it that way. You can you can stitch your lining a little bit closer. You know, have bigger seam allowances for your lining. But right now, I'm going to put this. And you see that it really, it's not that big of a difference. Yes, it could be more neat, neat inside, but once you kind of... Push it and square it up. Just where's my little pushing? There we go. If I see that the difference is like exorbitant, like it's something like, oh my goodness, it's just that lining looks super huge in there. I will adjust my lining or I would have stitched closer my lining. But see that it's not, it's not a it's a box to store things in. Not a big deal. But right now we top stitch and the little cute box is done. Let's stitch that. Um, it'll start from the back. And I position my clips wrong too, but it's okay. It's all good in Madeline's word. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of press this down. Push it down, make sure I'm catching both sides. And you'll see. I don't backstitch when I start because I go over it when I get to the last point. So I don't do that. Because then I have backstitching and then backstitching on top of the backstitching. So no. I go forward. Just like so. And over there I kind of left. I'm gonna take this one off too. And you see, it's not a material. Almost to the end.
take those pins out. Oops. And now, I, I'm gonna go to my first stitchings, I backstitch it. Yeah. So yes, it does have some backstitching, but it doesn't have like a big, um, backstitching thing, like a super huge noticeable thing. And then you fill it up. The next step is to fill it up with whatever you would like to put in there. You can put in these two buckets. I can put scissors in there. I can put my pens. I can put a few pens in there. My turning tools. You own marking devices and then I can put whatever like whatever I want to put in there maybe I'm using some tape or some vinyl or like my zipper jig I want it in a spot somewhere you know you can fill it up with whatever you need to fill it up but it's pretty easy uh, and you'll be recycling the cute envelopes so that's it. Simple as that. Not a big deal. Hope you like it. It's a crazy tutorial. I kind of stitch kind of fast. Um, and I don't think I'm going to do very good at editing either. So hope you like it and just can make one maybe. <laughs>